and welcome to another episode of the Intrepid English podcast. My name is Kate and I'm a teacher at Intrepid English. If you've been studying English for a while, you'll undoubtedly have stumbled across several phrasal verbs. Phrasal verbs are extremely common in English. They pop up everywhere in everyday conversation. If you're not looking out for them, you may not even realize you're using them. In today's podcast episode, we will go over some commonly used phrasal verbs related to clothing. Some of these phrasal verbs are separable, meaning that you can use a noun or object pronoun in the center of the verb and preposition. Other phrasal verbs are inseparable, meaning the noun or object pronoun must go afterwards. Our students frequently ask us about this English grammar topic, so much so that we decided to make a whole course dedicated to it. You can check out our Figure Out Phrasal Verbs course in the Intrepid English Academy and learn how to use phrasal verbs for all occasions, from movement phrasal verbs to business phrasal verbs, relationship phrasal verbs to travel phrasal verbs and much more. Number one, try on. When you want to check if a piece of clothing looks good on you or fits properly, you try it on. For example, I'm going to go to the changing rooms and try these dresses on. I think these trousers are going to be too big, but I'll try them on just to check. Number two, put on, take off. When you start wearing a piece of clothing, you put it on. When you remove a piece of clothing, you take it off. For example, I put my coat on every morning before I leave the house. Please take your shoes off before you enter the living room. Number three, have on. To be wearing a piece of clothing is to have the clothing on. We can add the object in the middle of the verb and the preposition because this phrasal verb is separable. For example, Mary has her wedding dress on in this picture. It's so cold today, I have two jumpers on. Number four, dress up, dress down. To dress up is to dress nicely, normally for a fancy occasion or celebration. Dress up can also be used to describe when you dress in fancy dress or a costume to impersonate a character or a famous person. Similarly, to dress down is to dress in a casual or relaxed fashion. Some office workplaces have dress down Fridays, where employees come in more casual clothing because it's almost the weekend. Here are some examples. I'm going to dress up for David's birthday drinks tonight. It will be nice to see everyone. All the children dressed up as their favourite fictional character to celebrate World Book Day. I always dress down on Fridays. It's so nice not to have to wear a suit and tie for a change. Number five, wrap up. If it's cold outside, you should wrap up and wear plenty of layers to keep yourself warm. Here are some examples. Make sure you wrap up well before going out. It's forecast to snow later. The baby looks so cute all wrapped up in his new coat. Number six, hang up. You may have already read this one in Tom's blog post on phrasal verbs with hang. When you are putting an item of clothing away in your wardrobe, you hang it up using a clothes hanger. For example, I have finished ironing these shirts. Could you please hang them up upstairs? There are a lot of coats hanging up in the hallway. Thanks for listening to today's podcast episode. If you want to practice what you've learnt, you can go to the blog and there's a fill in the spaces exercise there. You can post your answers in the comment section and an intrepid English teacher will get back to you. On the topic of clothes, Intrepid English is all about empowerment, which is why we are so happy to be working with SmartWorks, a charity that exists to give women the confidence they need 
to reach their full potential, secure employment and change the trajectory of their lives. As specialists in teaching job interview skills, the Intrepid English teachers are delighted to help SmartWorks by volunteering our time to help unemployed women with English as a second language to develop their skills and confidence to prepare for job interviews. It's not only the teachers who support this fantastic cause. Did you know that 6% of all Intrepid English sales are donated to three charities, one of which is SmartWorks? On 21st of October, Lorraine attended a very special fundraising event held by SmartWorks. If you head on over to the Intrepid English blog, you can see some photos of Lorraine and SmartWorks Outreach Officer Abby at the event. Also, if you have any questions about Intrepid English, booking lessons, joining group classes, studying any of the courses in the academy, the new audio courses, or how to book your free trial lesson, you can ask us using the little green chat box on our website. My name is Kate, one of the teachers at Intrepid English, and thank you for listening to today's podcast.